Today on the Inside Scoop, I got to talk about the On3 NIL Elite Series. I spent two days at the inaugural event here in Nashville, talked to dozens of recruits, and got a lot to share with you. I want to hit on the highlights from the event, things that stuck out to me that I think are important for you to know. Some of these clips that I've cut are intel. Some of the clips are just candid conversations that we had with recruits. And then I'm going to tell you what I learned about NIL in the class of 2024. But let's start it off first with five-star wide receiver Jeremiah Smith, the number one wide receiver in America. He tells us why he goes head-to-head -head with some of these Twitter trolls. People are going, at, going at me on Twitter uh, uh, saying, oh, why are you committing? You visiting other schools, but you're not in my shoes, so you don't know what's really going on. So I'm just taking it day by day. I mean, I'm just building a relationship with coaches because you never know you might need them one day. So. Why do you entertain that on Twitter? Uh, I just got to ask. Why do you I entertain? Mean, You're the number one wide receiver in America. You can do what you want. Uh, I mean, it's it's fun because they they not going to expect you to respond. So that when they get back, right. on, yeah. So it's it's, it's, it's fun. I'll, be, I'll just be having fun. They uh, respond a little different too, huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh no! Best of luck. Hope you come to our school, yeah, uh, uh, real yeah, Mr. Yeah. Smith, sir. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could do whatever you want when you're the number one wide receiver in America. Then we pressed Jeremiah Smith a little bit more on what his, how he considers his commitment to Ohio State. And he says something very telling in this clip. For you to where you might want to get to making a decision? Not to sign a day. I'm not, because I want to see uh, the games. I want to see how everything play out for sure. That's December or February, in theory. Because it's still, still early. Yeah, Reserving still the right early. to change, but. Uh, I say, December. It might change. Sure. Yeah, it might. So there you have it. To all the Ohio State fans that keep dropping the lock emojis in the comment section of these videos, you heard it from Jeremiah Smith himself. He just said he's going to make a final decision in December. All right, let's keep it moving. After we talked to the number one wide receiver, we talked to the number one safety in America, and he gave us a little intel on what Dylan Rayola told him about a month before he committed to Georgia. Yeah, I'm mean, like, Dylan Raiola, like, he calls me more than the coaches sometimes. Like, yeah, he definitely owed me for sure. So, like, he, he said he wanted me to go up for the OV with him this weekend, but, you know, I got to go to Clemson. But that's definitely my guy. He always texts me every day. He texts me probably right now uh, about Georgia. He, we were just talking about it. So he's definitely crazy about Georgia. How about that for the inside scoop? I might have to get KJ Bolden to be my co-host on this show. We'll see what happens there. Uh, KJ is uncommitted. He's still taking his official visits. He will be at Clemson this weekend, Georgia down the road. All right, then we talked to five-star Edge Colin Simmons, the number one Edge in America. And you know what? I thought it was about time for him to name a leader. Now, I don't know if he, he felt it was about time, but play the clip. Do you have a leader right now? I know it's early. I mean, you, you've told me you're not going to make a decision until into the fall. So right now, as it stands, do you have a leader? Texas and LSU head to head. Okay. We got him. Colin Simmons names a leader. It's a two-headed leader, but nonetheless, you get the point. There's two teams that are trending, LSU, Texas. If you follow his recruitment, that's not a shock, but still good for him to say it out loud. All right, four-star running back Jared Gibson, he commented on his former t IMG teammates who are now at Miami. The um, program around and my brothers that just went there, um, um, Francis, Miguel, um, Riley, and um, Jaden Wayne just got there, you know, and to see how, how they're doing, the progress they're making, my, my dog Francis potentially having a starting spot there. So just to see that. Make me like. I love that clip. I don't know why, but Jared Gibson gives a great answer to that question. And, you know, don't sleep on peer to peer recruiting. This is what matters. He has friends at Miami. Now, a lot of people, including myself, feel that the Texas Longhorns are in a really good spot for Jared Gibson, but he's back at Miami again this weekend, third visit this offseason. Not saying he goes there, but there are some connections, and I would not sleep on the Miami Hurricanes. All right, let's go out to California and talk to the number one tackle, offensive tackle in America, Brandon Baker. Now, J.D. sets him up for like a USC – pipeline question from his high school but baker kind of decides to take it in another direction and it's very telling 
And Lincoln Riley loves some quarterbacks, man. They, yeah. they recruit the quarterback position well. No doubt. Is that a big deal for you when you're picking a school? Yeah, I would say it definitely plays a factor. Uh, you know, like Dylan Riola, he just committed to Georgia. And when he was at Ohio State, I was like, you know, why not Ohio State? But, you know, he decommitted to Georgia now. So, you know, why not Georgia? You know, they're at the moment number one, number one class of the 2024 class. And having a five-star quarterback, uh, you know, is definitely a no-brainer. Kind of a common theme for all recruits when they brought up Dylan Riola. Why not Georgia? I mean, look, they're stacking talent. They got back-to-back -back national championships. And it wasn't really the answer that I was expecting to hear from Brandon Baker, who's out of California. But it looks like the Bulldogs could be in line for yet another number one player at his position. All right, let's go to five-star wide receiver Ryan Wingo. Now, he's talking about his relationship with Coach Prime. Let's listen. So like yeah. talking to Coach Sanders. Um, depending on how how the conversation going, uh, I remember like when I was on the phone. I think the first time he like made fun of my locker room because <laughs> it was old. Uh, but you know, it's a, he a pretty cool dude. Um, and then you know he's like one of the best players to ever touch a football. Right. So it's like you kind of listen to us every, but he also a coach. So it's kind of it's kind of weird, but he pretty cool dude. Yes, sir. I can totally see Dion making fun of his locker room, but that's why he's so endearing. He really connects with the recruits. He's hilarious. We'll see Ryan Wingo back out in Boulder, Colorado this summer. I thought those clips were important for you to see, but I also want to talk about the number one overall prospect for on three edge Dylan Stewart. He told Chad Simmons a couple weeks ago that he wanted to decide in August, but he told us this week that he's going to push his recruitment into the fall and possibly December. So if you thought that you were getting one of his final official visits this summer, he's going to take this thing into the fall and most likely take more official visits then. So we push that recruitment kind of out of our peripheral into the fall. Now, I put in a pick on the recruiting prediction machine for five-star wide receiver Mike Matthews out of Georgia. Let me give you a little insight. I mean, this is the inside scoop after all, so let me tell you why Mike Matthews, if you go to his pro profile right now, is trending to Tennessee. You see, we were just going to sit down with Mike Matthews and do one of these interviews from the clips that you saw, and before we start recording, my computer was up and his profile was on my computer, and you could see his recruiting prediction machine uh, up there, and I pointed at it, and I said, you think this is right? And had Clemson at the top, and it had some other teams. And he looks at it, and he goes, nah, I think you need Tennessee on the top. I said, oh, really? I said, if I put a pick in, I, I think we could get you trending. And he kind of looks at me and like gave me the head nod. So I put in a prediction for Mike Matthews to Tennessee. I feel really good about that. That could be a huge five-star pickup for the Vols. And I also like where Tennessee stands for five-star Ryan Wingo. I know the buzz is around Georgia this weekend because he's going for an official visit, but let things kind of quiet down. Let the excitement from this official visit die down. He's not making a decision next week. I think he'll be back at Tennessee before he makes one of those and not ready to put a pick in for Ryan Wingo to Tennessee, but I like where the volunteers stand. All right, let's talk about what I learned about NIL and the class of 2024. When we sat down with these guys, we asked every recruit the same NIL questions. And one of them was, how much does NIL factor in your recruitment? We talked to about 30 guys. Only one recruit, four-star wide receiver Nick Marsh, openly admitted that NIL plays a big factor in his recruitment. So were the other recruits lying? Or were they just being honest and it doesn't really factor in? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't want to think that they were lying. I want to think that they were honest and it doesn't really factor in. Either way, though, I got the feeling that it's still a taboo topic. Even though it's been legal for two years now, NIL is still not fully socially acceptable. You know, there's things in recruiting where you can say these are major factors for me. And even if NIL was a major factor for some of these recruits, I think it's a little bit taboo to say right now. I think we need more NIL babies to come through. I think once we see a completely different conversation about NIL, it'll be in the 24-25 cycle. I think that we just need some of the guys that started with NIL in the 21 and 22 class to cycle through, and, we can, and the younger players can see NIL from start to finish. I think then it'll be more socially acceptable to talk about. 
that's really what I learned from attending the on three NIL elite series. Wanted to kind of truncate it down for you guys to get it all in all the Intel, all the candid conversations right there. But overall, I think the on three NIL elite series was a smash hit. This was the inaugural event. And I think it's only going to grow exponentially as each year passes. I think this will be the event of the summer for all top recruits. And I can't wait to do it all again next year. We are on location doing a little inside scoop today. I got my guy, Rusty Mansell from Dogs HQ with me. Rusty, it's a, it's a dog-loaded event here at the NIL series. But one of the most talked about Georgia Bulldogs at this event is not even at this event. Yeah. Every recruit is talking about Dylan Riola's commitment to Georgia. Yeah. What sort of impact has he made in just about three weeks well, they look at the nation's number one player in the country, regardless of position. You start talking about Rayola and his effect. Uh, Jaden Riddell, who's here, a young man I just met for the first time, six foot four, two hundred thirty pound tight end, seventeen years old. Uh, that was big in his decision to to ultimately decide on Georgia. Yep. Uh, Rayola wanted to be here, had a final he couldn't get couldn't get changed on his last week of school there in Arizona. So, uh, but still, him not being here, it did not hurt Georgia having him committed. No, his presence is felt here, regardless of whether he's here or not. Recruits are talking about him, whether they're committed to Georgia or not. Speaking about somebody that's committed to Georgia, that's quarterback Ryan Puglisi. He's out of Connecticut, yep. and he committed to the Dogs back in October. Now, Dylan Ryle has been the talk of the town, and I wasn't sure what Puglisi was going to do. You know, you, you assume teams were going to hit him up after Dylan Ryle committed, yep. but when he got here and I sat him down and we talked, man, I don't – Dude, I don't he's, think he's going to budge. He's not. I had a long conversation with him right before we came on camera. He kind of walked up to me and said, look, you know, I'm going to Georgia. I told Ohio State I'm going to Georgia. I told North Carolina I'm going to Georgia. He said, I'm going there. Georgia told me up front the entire time that they're going to take two in 2024. He knew it, and he just told me a while ago. He goes, look, Georgia has too many good players. I'm going there, and I'm going to take a shot of that job because I can't wait to get there. Yeah, he's got that – kind of loyalty that you yep. see from a lot of commitments that might come from the state of Georgia yep. Yep. or from the South. But Ryan Puglisi, he is from Connecticut. And yeah. He's all in. I think the communication from Georgia, you know, losing Todd Monk and even going to Mike Bobo didn't hurt him at all because they had told him up front, listen, we're recruiting too. And that starts with Kirby Smart and some of those. I talked to his dad. His dad told me Scott Cochran is a yeah. guy that's heavily involved. Yeah. I didn't know that Scott Cochran was heavily involved in this recruitment. They, tr they trust Coach Cochran off the field with him and kind of the player development role he has. So there's a lot of people. George has recruited Ryan Puglisi really, really hard. And I'm going to tell you now, he's an impressive kid in person. Yeah. I, there's no cracks in his commitment. Yep. You know, I yep. even asked, did a lot of teams hit you up after Ryan? Yeah, of course. Teams yep. called me. I wasn't expecting it, but he seems like he's all dog. All right. A lot of the prospects here in Nashville at the On3 Elite Series are here during the week, but this weekend they will be on college campuses. Big visits. June official visits start, and one of the top prospects going on the road is Sammy Brown. He's going to go to take a trip to Clemson, mm -hmm. who you know most think this is a two-team race between the Dogs and the Tigers. So yeah. is there concern over this visit to Clemson with Sammy Brown? I get hit up all the time. People say, is Sammy Brown a silent commit to Georgia? Absolutely, 100%. He is not. Right. You know what I mean? He is not. I can tell you 100% that kid is not. I've spent a lot of time around him and know his parents, and they're doing their due diligence mm -hmm. on all these schools. There is no question this is a very big visit uh, in his ultimate final decision when he makes it. Uh, you know, Tennessee had a really good visit this past weekend, so I still think they're in this thing. But mm -hmm. if you had to pin me down, I think it's going to end up being a Georgia-Clemson at the end. So he goes to Clemson this weekend, and then he's at Georgia next weekend. So maybe it's sometime in July. But these next two weeks for Sammy Brown are very, very important to him and his family. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the Tennessee visit, I think when we get to his decision day and sometime in July whenever he decides to, to commit – I think we're going to look in the rear view, and that Tennessee visit's going to be pretty far away. Uh, I don't know. You know, he's got his mom's from Knoxville. So there's some ties there yeah. now. There's some ties. I just think that George and Clemson personally have a little bit of lead. I'm not sure if anybody can run them down to you. Right. End. Yeah. We'll see about that. All right. Let's talk about the Buford boys, KJ mm. Molden and Edric Houston. Both high Five on the stars. dogs, but both have options. They can punch their ticket, they can go anywhere they want in the country, yeah. and they yeah. have the offers. Who do you think Georgia sits in a better spot with right now heading into the summer? 
Uh, if you pin me down right now, I would probably say K.J. Bolden. I think K.J. Bolden's a kid that Kirby Smart has personally recruited. He's told me that up here this weekend. I talked to his mom some, and some of the things she's told me that Georgia is very high for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. But, again, that one's not over. By any means, I can tell you that. But if I had to pick one of the two right now, which one would end up, I would probably go with K.J. Bolden. So who's the biggest competition for Edric Houston? Might be Ohio State for both. Really? Yeah, I mean, everybody in the country is recruiting both of these kids. But uh, Ohio State seems to be a team that they, they talk about a lot. You know, I was around them last night at dinner, and, uh, you know, four or five of us were sitting with those guys at dinner. And Ohio State's a team that is definitely, definitely in a mix for both of them. All right. I want to play a little abbreviated game of sticker flip. This is usually a longer game, but we're going to stick to most of the prospects that are here. So this is an easy game. You got me nervous on this one now. I'm going to throw out a name, and you tell me, Josh, he's going to stick or he's going to flip. Some of these might be Georgia commits. Some of them might be committed to other programs. So let's start off with an easy one here. Ellis Robinson. Ellis Robinson, I bring up his name. He's scheduled an official visit to Miami, Mm. maybe looking around a little bit more. Sticker flip. He's going to one hunt. I I would say 99% this kid's sticking. And Fran Brown, that relationship from New Jersey with that family, I talked to his dad today. Fran Brown is a big deal in this one. I know you've been covering recruiting for a long time because you almost said 100%, but you know as well as I know that in recruiting, leave yourself an out. Just ever 100%. <laughs> leave yourself an out. All right. Georgia quarterback commitment to Mello Jones. He was just at Tennessee. Stick or flip? Stick. All right. Chauncey Bowens, the Gator commitment. He's been flirting with the dogs, but Ooh. he is solidly committed to UF in the end. Stick or flip on Chauncey Bowens. So he has a visit next weekend to Georgia, and that is a massive visit for him. I'm going to say stick, but I'm telling you right now, this one's razor, razor thin behind the scenes. All right. How about, let's go with Ryan Puglisi, stick or flip. He's 100%, 99% got to stick. There you go. All right. Now for the big one. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, the number one wide receiver in America, Jeremiah Smith, committed to Ohio State, stick or flip? Right now, I think he sticks with Ohio State, and I talked to a lot of people up here around that. I'll tell you this. I'm comfortable in saying that Georgia has made a move with him. At the end of the day, man, to go get a wide receiver from Ohio State, somebody of this caliber, it's going to take a, it's gonna take a big, big recruiting yeah. win to do that. It sounds crazy right now because he is going to take all these visits. But yeah. remember – uh, with Brandon Innes last year. Yep, yep, Same kind of yep. around the summertime. Sure. Everybody thought for sure it, yep. he was going to bounce Florida somewhere. Kid. He's going to take right. visits. He's, He's going to take, take visits. But yep. Brandon Innes, at the end of the day, yep. stay true to his commitment to Ohio yep. State. And, you know, so we'll see with Jeremiah Smith. All right, speaking of big visit weekends, there's one in Athens this weekend. Big one. Official visit, uh, the 1st of June. I'm sorry, I think it starts the 2nd of June. Starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. So who is the most important uncommitted target that will be on campus? Okay, this might not be like a national name, but I can tell you a position of me. Yeah. He is extremely important to the Georgia staff. It's Justin Green, young man at Mountain View High School. He's a five-tech defensive end. You know those 6'4", 260-pound guys that can rush, 270-pound guys that can rush? Um, I think Justin Green, this is a big, big visit for he and his family. All right, there you have it. Dogs HQ, they'll keep you up to date all weekend long with these big visits. Rusty, thanks for joining the Inside Scoop. We'll be back in Nashville, baby. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. And remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.